If you take a look at Blockbuster, I remember I used to go to Blockbuster probably almost every weekend. Rent a video game, or rent a movie, or rent both, and they're making a lot of money. And the reason Blockbuster went down is because 51 setting coffee grinder, this thing is a beast. The amount, of, the amount of people launching milk frothers with literally a product that's like ours, but worse. No variations, no offer, and selling it for more expensive. It, it's shocking. Why is this product doing well? It's because... This is the Aaron Cordovez Show. Welcome to the Aaron Cordova Show, where I talk about e-commerce, Amazon, business, selling companies, buying companies, doing stuff that your parents will tell you you should calm down and relax. Take a normal job instead. This is what I talk about because you know what? I've shown my parents how it <laughs> I've shown my parents that it can be done, it can be fun, I don't need to stress my life, and I can make a ton of money. And so they're now okay with it. At the beginning, they were not. But I will give you the permission to be crazy and do things that are not normal and instead meant to be extraordinary. Today, I want to talk about our newest product launch. This amazing coffee grinder, the Zulai Kitchen 51 setting coffee grinder. This thing is a beast. It's amazing. I love it. I love how it looks. And I don't even, I don't even drink coffee. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about when you launch a product, okay? This product is doing phenomenal. Uh, where right now it's after Christmas, okay? Uh, right now it's December 28th, I believe. Uh, yes, December 28th. Uh, the sales are down and everything. Like generally people, obviously Christmas finished. They're not buying Christmas gifts. And yet we launched it just this last week. It's doing extremely well. Now, why? Why is this product doing well? It's because we have more settings than any other person. We have more control than any other person. This thing, the features, the way it works is actually superb, fantastic. We did massive research on this thing, working with a fantastic uh, supplier. And it's just doing extremely well because the product is better than what is out there. We have more attachments. We have better colors. We have uh, better uh, usability. You know, we have a freaking UV coating to not let the sunlight and stuff hit the beans. We have all sorts of crazy stuff. We have beautiful packaging. We have a strong brand. And we're coming to this market knowing, hey, we have a value add. We have an offer that is better than what's out there. If you take a look at Blockbuster, when Blockbuster was at the top, right? I remember I used to go to Blockbuster probably almost every weekend. And we'd either rent a video game, we'd rent a, 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 a movie or rent whatever, or both. And these guys are just charging, 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 you know, and they're making a buttload of money, okay? How are you going to beat Blockbuster, okay? We know the answer to that. It is not do the same exact thing for cheaper. It's not. They are already are in the top spot. They're already there. You need a new offering that's going to knock these people out of the water that's actually a better offering. And if you could do better and cheaper, that's a win-win. If you can do better than the top and cheaper than the top, that is the best. Only cheaper than the top won't get you very far. Better and cheaper. So right now I'm doing the, the entire launch process, okay? Right now I'm, I'm, my product is just arriving in from China, our new brand, um, which will be revealed soon, okay? And I'm going in there with a better offering than the entire market by far. But my offer is so much better than what's out there. I suspect that my product will sell not just on day one, but we should be profitable within the first week. And if all goes well, uh, we'll be able to have a higher price than other people. We'll be able to dominate the advertising. We'll be able to grab attention and grab a good part of market share immediately right off the bat. Then when that's validated, boom, get enough stock to not, to not run out and actually be able to really advertise strong. But when can you do that? When you have a better product, if you have the same thing, like, uh, man, I, I, I've seen the amount of the amount of people launching milk frothers with literally a product that's like ours, but worse. No variations, no offer, and selling it for more expensive. It, it's shocking. People try this every day. They go, oh my gosh, Aaron Cordova is, you know, let me launch a milk frother to go compete with this guy. Yet they don't innovate. They don't make anything special. And they literally, it, it's the most garbage thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. That is wrong that is not going to help. So when we're going with coffee grinders, we go, okay, we can just do the same coffee grinder everyone is doing, but or can we make one better? When you make a product that you are so proud of it, and I say this so much because it's it, it, it's the basic of the basic. It's the most fundamental piece. Why are you in business? Why would anybody want to do business with you? Because your product is awesome. 
because you consistently deliver products better than average. You consistently live up to your promises. You consistently provide good value and you have great service, okay? And you're a real person and you're not, I don't know, like you're not lying to your customers. That is probably the top thing. If you're just doing that, provide a better product and at a better price if possible, right? Until your product is so much better and so superior that you can have a higher price. Good, that might happen on the line. But if you have a product that's worse and more expensive, your chances of success are zero. And that is what happens to most sellers. They have zero value add. And they'll say, well, mine is prettier or more beautiful. And they say it, but then you look at it and it's not. We do a survey right now on every product. And if we, and if we haven't done it, it means we'll, it's on the to-do list and we're going to get to it, right? Because we didn't start this way. But right now, a product to even get approved into production, it has to be compared with one of the top sellers and we have to beat them, okay? And the way we do it is we take the image that's not like retouched. Like we just take the, the sample of uh, the product of the competitor. We take our sample and we just take a picture of it. This is a, a strategy I developed um, pretty recently because I thought, how do we have a good experiment, like a good test? Well, they both have the picture in the same angle, in the same way, in the same lighting. So we take the product, we put it on the, on the desk, we take a picture of it, we take another product, our sample or whatever we want to do, we take a picture of it. And we ask customers, like, which one do you like more? Because if you can compare two items that are taken in the picture the exact same way. If you can beat them in that format, then you can also beat them when it's retouched and beautiful and Photoshop and rendering and all that stuff because you can make it more beautiful. You can work just as hard as that part as them. But once you produce the product, you cannot change it. So it's a good thing to test before the thing goes in production. We're starting this now. We're learning. We are in a massive learning phase. And we've also learned that when you make a product that's not good and, and you're going to fail. So... What I tell people, not just new people, um, but experienced sellers, massive sellers, make something that is better. So so this this thing having the features on this coffee grinder right here. Okay, 51 grind options, large capacity. Yeah, ours is bigger. The capacity for the hopper is bigger. Okay. It has a 40 millimeter, 40 millimeter stainless steel anti-static conical burrs. Okay, so conical burr is a big piece. A lot of them have conical burrs, okay, but ours is a pr pretty big and pretty, you know, very, very effective. Digital display. The control arc thing is awesome. Like, it's right in the front. You can see it. It's not, some of them have them at the top or they don't have digital. They, it's just confusing, right? Uh, easier clean design. Great. What's included? We have so many little attachments too, okay? A bunch of attachments, like a, just so many stuff. Like, it's crazy amount of things we have in here. A lot of, and then we have warranties. You just write in and we'll like, we'll take care of you. So, why is it doing well? We're in a we're in a price point. As you go higher in the price, okay. As you as you increase in price, right? As you get higher and higher in price or in complexity, your amount of competitors go less. For this type of item, the competitors we go after is maybe five people. There are five sellers. People say Amazon is so saturated. You can never sell on Amazon. It's incredible. There's millions and millions of sellers and whatever. Like people will say this. The truth is, in any category you really only have four to 10, maybe sometimes one or two competitors, but really there's not more in most categories, more than 10 people that are actually doing something significant in the category. When you get the top 10 of a, of a, of a category on Amazon, you have a few players. So like in the milk frother, I think we have three of the top or whatever, like there's quite a bit. We're, at a, we're a big significant player in that category. And there's a couple of other guys probably like three other sellers that are doing things that continue to move. When a seller or a brand has a product and it's been number one for eight years and the offering has not changed, the only reason they're still number one is because nobody's come in and said, I'm going to improve this product and make it actually better. If there's anything that I can tell people is make something better. Jeez. Go look at the, go look at the milk fathers that we have. Okay. We have great reviews. We have spectacular colors. We created literally an entire new market. People want the colorful. They want the things. We add more colors than everybody. We make variations. We make different designs. That's what we do. But why? Because it's it's what we owe to the customer, right? When you look at some of these top guys, right? Like a, the Stanley Cup or Simple Modern, these, these, these tumblers. They have like 40, 50 colors, 60 colors. And then they do... Uh, um, um, colors and, and royalties are with Harry Potter and with uh, whatever the NFL teams and within colleges and all that stuff why do they do that? because it is an offering that no one else has and if you want a thing with a football team you have to get it from some modern 
that, that's how it works. If you want a Disney whatever bento box, you want a Disney tumbler, you're going to get it from these guys. You continue to push the envelope. We have a massive partnership that's going to be announced probably in about February. And it's going to it's going to take the category to a new level that we're in. So anytime you do something, just don't do it like a like a brand new person. Do it like it, even if you're new. Do it as one of the best people. Do it as a professional saying, hey, I'm going to take this market because I'm going to do something special that no one else has done. Okay, right now we're we're always looking for what can we do that's better. And when can you maybe not do something better? I mean, you always want to do something better. We're looking at something now. We found a supplier that um, produces a product that sells all day long for, let's say, over $100, okay? We found out that the cost from that person's um, uh, supplier and that person's factory is so low, like, we could sell that same product at $50, right? And make money. Half the price. That's a massive value add. But that's not what we're going to do. We're actually going to add, and we're going to take that product, okay? And the quality is going to be the same because it's the same supplier, okay? We're going to improve the product. We're going to make an offering that is a little bit better. And we're going to come in at a price that's half the, half the price, you see? You want to do both. And our entire strategy in launching has become different. It is not take things off the shelf and stick it on. That strategy, it's not a terrible strategy, but it becomes less and less workable over time, right? In 2012, before I even started on Amazon, people did that and they became millionaires almost overnight. Like you would put up anything, you're the first person to get it to Amazon and you'd become a millionaire, like crazy, right? Over time, it got a little bit harder. Now you had to have a product that was good, okay? And it was a decent price and whatever. As time goes forward, the only way you're actually gonna for sure win is if your product is better and it's cheaper and you can market it well. Like if you do all those things, then you're gonna make it. So we'll, we'll redo our, our percentage of product launches that succeeded but before we did this our product launch success when i calculated it was about like 12 percent meaning products skews variations that we launched and everything um sometimes we launch a product with like 50 variations so then if like i think we did that maybe once or twice what and that product then got scrapped or 40 variations got scrapped we, that percentage was very low on that right so if you take into account all launches not just like parent products but all products and that's pretty low but still, we're still growing and we're still growing massively. Why? Because even if you succeed on 10% of products, okay, that one product, if you keep selling it for five years, even if you keep selling it for maybe one year, depending on how much that's sold, it will undo and outdo all of the loss that you had that 90% of the time. One product can make you, I don't know, $500,000, a million dollars. And maybe all the failed product launches, the other nine, maybe those only lost 30 grand a piece, Okay. So that would be like $270,000 in a loss. And that one product maybe made you half a million or a million. And then every year, that thing br keeps bringing you 300000 200000 half a million, whatever it is. It was okay that you succeeded on 10%. So realize, I'm not saying a 12%, 13%, whatever percent ratio is bad, but I'm thinking, is there a way, like what did those products do better? And I found that a lot of the products we succeeded in had something special and better about it. Like this product right now, we have zero reviews. It's doing amazing, zero reviews. That is a perfect sign to tell you when the reviews come in, they're good, everything's going great, this product is gonna crush. It's gonna do amazing. And and that's okay, like you wanna come and, and, and try to do this product, that's okay. You're gonna, like we've developed this thing for, I don't know, maybe seven, eight months of development of making this product and this and blah. Like you could try to come in the market, you, fine. And people will, they're going to see this and they're going to do it. The amount of people that I even, that I even have talked to in person and in like hand to hand shaking, smiling to each other that launched the frothers. It's a lot of them. 99% of them fail and then 1% make it. So you can come. Uh, so far, none of the competition has done anything meaningful uh, to our entire company. We're, we're, still, we're still going strong. And if someone comes into the category, and bring something new and they're improving it, it also means that hopefully the category itself is growing because the competitors are getting stronger. So I don't know. Does that mean that I'm going to go and cry and be like, oh my gosh, someone I talked to launched a milk frother? No, I, I understand we're, we're in a market and, and we launch products all the time. People that exist like this coffee grinder. I know someone who sells coffee grinders. Okay. Like, chiropractors know other chiropractors. Does that mean they're going to hate each other? Like, dentists know other dentists. Like, I don't know. This, like, okay. Like, you're an influencer and some other influencer. I don't know. There's there's so much space in this game. Now, if you made a... Uh, like, there are also companies. So, we sell espresso machines. 
there are companies that their entire company is just selling one espresso machine model, okay? And I've seen them, and that's all they do all day long and everything. And, okay, cool. Probably that person will have a better coffee machine than us at this time. But if we continue to grow and we can invest more and more into making our espresso machine better and better, it does. they may be hyper-focused and they still may have a product that fits a specific type of customer and our product will fit other customers more, right? You know, we don't have a $5,000 coffee machine. We have a $1,000 coffee machine. So it's a different audience. It's a different type of person. And a lot of times you can become better and cheaper. That That is the ultimate. So I, I, I guess in launching a product, okay, if you have any questions of launching a product, you don't know whether you want to do it or not. Well, check out my free course right now, okay? And and just get this concept of what is it you're going to do? What are you going to bring to the market, okay? And I'm and I'm I'm launching my entire my humongous of course I've been working on for months now. I think we started in September recording. And I'm doing this entire thing from scratch. I still don't know 100% if it's going to work, right? But the way I'm doing it and because the product is surveyed, it looks better, has a better offering, everything's better about it. I'm betting, right, all this reputation I've been talking about at this and I'm releasing the course, I'm betting that it does well. Now, it's not a 10% success rate. I'm expecting 100% success rate because I did this one myself with my own hands and surveyed and the offer is so much better. So even though the market is a pretty small market, I believe we can take very, very rapidly 10, 15% of the market. And if we do it well, we will increase the market size and get up to 30, 40% of this market even with fewer reviews. Why? Because the product is better. And so the success rate, rather than launching five products and seeing which one will go, find one where you know it is better. You have asked other people, not yourself, and they can see the improvement. Not when they touch the product, because when they can touch the product, they've already made the sale. You've already either won or lost a battle. In that first image, they can see the difference. If in the first image you can see the difference, you have a massive fighting chance at succeeding on selling on Amazon on the marketplace because that's what people see. They see the image. We're, we're in a very visual world. People are love their phones, their desktop, whatever it is, and they look at it. And if the thing looks beautiful and you can ask customers and like, which one do you like? And they like yours better. You have a fantastic chance to start. So instead of doing five that are not surveyed and one of them happens to be better than the top one, pick one, go all into it, Make that one go. Now, if that doesn't go and it doesn't succeed, the answer is not to just start a new product and just, okay, so the next one is do the same thing again and not change anything. The things that you can and should learn if that happens is, one, is your product any better? That's what you need to ask yourself. If you failed a product launch, is your product any better? Would you in your own house take off both logos and say, I would rather have my product than the top competitor. If you cannot say that, you did not do everything possible on that product development. When you have a massive company, a lot of times they are not spending that time on developing those products. You do a little change and your product can be better. That's what people do not realize that the skill currently right now in the production of most physical products is at the factory level. These factories, they are skilled, but they need direction. They're engineeringly skilled. They're skilled... Um, not particularly with the design and looks, but they can execute a vision, okay? And you can figure out what you want to be done better and propose it and work with someone else who has an engineering background and to get done what you would like done. But you can imagine it, you can put a rendering of it, and you can ask the customers, okay? Uh, a lot of times we use IntelliV, okay? IntelliV.net, I believe. Some people use PicFu. Uh, you could ask, you could, if you have an email list, you could go on a Facebook group. You could ask people on your Facebook, just like take out the logo so you don't know who's is who's and say, which one do you like? Getting that feedback is so utterly, utterly, utterly invaluable. And when we found that we didn't do it, we lose. And we find out when we did it and we win. And when we overwhelmingly win, it's almost a guarantee that the launch will be a success, which is why this product is well, because our, our image and our look is better than everyone else out there right now. Right now, we have the number one best looking and I believe best performing product. So this will be a top seller coming up soon. Why? Because it's amazing. And if you have a product that sucks and you market it better, you're basically defrauding people, uh, essentially. Because, I mean, in a way, right? It's a very strong statement, but you are essentially 
if you weren't there, the customer would have a better experience. That is a bad thing, okay? It's not necessarily a fraud because you're not lying to them. If you're just good at marketing something, it's a little bit worse, which happens a lot. Like people do do that for a living and they just charge people more for a product that costs less and is not as good. And that's okay, but I wouldn't find myself prideful in that. If I give them a better product, okay, and I can charge more, then that's okay. Because I've spent, I don't know, tens of billions of dollars on developing the best products and this and stuff, and someone can spend another $10 because I did a little bit more work, that's okay. I can live with that. But if my product is worse, okay, and I charge more, the customer would be better off if I didn't exist. So don't do that. Make the best product. Make the best product. Make it look beautiful. Sell it at a good price or a lower price until you become so well-known and develop that product. Because the very first time you do a product, it probably will not be in its best shape. Even this product now. It'll be in the market for six months. Okay, this, this coffee grinder. And some things will come in and some people might say, hey, I really like this feature. I want this. I want to change it. And we will go. And a lot of times we change the product and we say, hey, depending on how many people talk about it, how many people request something, uh, how good the reviews are, how bad the reviews are, whatever they talk about, we'll go and change a product in response to a customer. So over time, in three years from now, it is almost a sure thing for our company that this product will be better according to the customer, okay? That is what every company should be doing, right? And the reason Blockbuster went down is because people probably said, hey, I don't want to travel. I don't want to do this. Can you make it easier, blah, blah, And they said, no, you got to come to our store because we are it and that's it and we have availability. Then Redbox came out and then Netflix and all that stuff. And then people said like, I don't want to travel anymore. And the game was changed on them because someone could give them the same thing in their house, they didn't have to travel, no late fees. Oh, and if you if you have a late fee, instead of a late fee, you just buy it for the cost of the movie and then it's done. Blockbuster would charge you like $6 a day or $5 a day or something like that. And then you pay all the fees. And even if the fees was twice the movie, they would keep the movie. So they're getting high, high, high margins, a lot of extra fees, getting all the cash and then not changing and improving their operation to be better than the competition. And then they died. So that's what happens to people every day. And that's who you're going after when you're launching on Amazon. When you find a, a, a product that's been up there and they haven't been changing for a while and it has maybe poor reviews or there's someone coming up that's way better and it has a, some, some better offering, that's when these markets see a massive shift. And that is our job as entrepreneurs to find where can we bring value and how do we make the customer know that we're bringing value so we can bring that product to them, improve their life, improve our life, and possibly improve the competitor's life because when they start losing market share, they will have to either improve or pick a different market. Some people, they're like, oh, I don't like this market, Amazon store, and they go switch to something else where they have more success in because they're not focused on that thing. So it, even the person you're taking sales from potentially could benefit because they're saying, hey, this game is no longer for me. I can't keep up. I have to change professions. I have to get away from Amazon because I can no longer make it. Well, that's probably good for them because eventually it was going to come. So you're making, helping it faster. I mean, it's funny. It's like a weird thing. Maybe it's not. Maybe you, you did something bad to them. But the point is, sometimes when you pass somebody, they then improve and their offer is better. Okay. And then their customers are happier and they're staying in the game longer because someone else doesn't come in and crush them later. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's debatable whether it's good for competitors or not. I mean, maybe it's really horrible for them, but Okay, my business is not to cater to my competitors. My business is to cater to the customer, to make them be happier, to make our company to be stronger, and to have our company deliver better and better products uh, more often at, hopefully, if possible, lower prices or not. It could be the same prices or even higher prices if our product is that much better, okay? That's how you have a strong and healthy company, and that's how you have a strong and healthy launch. Do a product that's worth it, that's literally news and viral worthy. If your product, nobody can be proud, like, I got this, look how cool it is. If that video cannot be made, then probably that product should not be sold. So that's all I got for today. Launch products that are better. If there can be a better price, awesome. And the way that pricing works on Amazon, typically you start off at a lower price and as you get more reviews, you can increase your price because people have said and voted they like your product and they can shop with confidence. In retail, it's definitely, the, it's normally the opposite. Like a product comes out, okay, PlayStation 5 or I don't know, whatever, some sort of... Um, hair curler or something. That one's big and then it goes down over price because it's no longer new, okay? That's not how it works on Amazon. It's typically the opposite, okay? Starts low as you get more and more reviews, then you go higher because people know, hey, this company, I can trust them because they've sold so many units, they have so many reviews, they will not let me down and people pay a little bit, you know, a couple bucks extra or whatever um, to know that they're not getting a crappy product. 
because there are a lot of copy products. We have a lot of copycats, a lot of copycat factories. In fact, I found out uh, about two weeks ago, there is a factory in China that says, hey, we make Zulai Kitchen's milk frothers. And they have even put frothers with our logo. I don't know if they created it or they bought it. I, they probably, I guess, just printed it and put it in their factory production line and showed a customer and said, look, there's Zulai frothers. Pretending it's our factory. Literally doing it to that level to say that they're selling our stuff. And then that customer bought from them and they got a horrible batch because that factory is not a factory and they're actually literally lying and deceiving this customer. Then that, that, that product got a ton of bad reviews and that person is losing out. So don't, don't trust don't trust that. You, you cannot trust someone just saying, hey, I, I make the thing for Zulai. Like, here you go, I'll make your product. Because a lot of times, well, they won't. Ours, we have an exclusive factory where we make our milk frothers. Like, they will not work with anybody else. So if someone's telling you that right now, you're being lied to, just know that. And this happens very, very, very often because that's what people want to know. If that's the factory over the competitor, it means the product's quality is going to be good. And the factories know that. So they use it to their advantage. Not all of them, but some of them. And they will lie to your face. And sometimes they don't lie to your face. Sometimes what they say is, oh, yeah. We're their factory, but they produced maybe a, a something 15 years ago for, not for us, but let's say for any company. I said, oh yeah, we produced for them. Well, we produced for them or they were the factory 15 years ago and they're no longer the factory. So a lot of times they'll take that and they're not specifically lying. They're just saying, hey, um, yeah, we are their factory or we work with them or something like that. And then it's just a stretching of the truth because they used to, right? So um, take them to account and find out like, Okay, if that's if that's a factory of some top person, then you better test it and see if it's really actually as good quality, right? And then there you go. If your product is amazing, you have it at a good price, you should do well uh, if your listing doesn't suck. All right. By the way, my course that I'm releasing is spectacular. We've been working on it right now, putting a lot of different finishing touches on it, adding a little assignments and things to learn to make sure you get that information and you can have a successful park launch in 2024 okay so s sign up at www.aaroncordovas.com slash start okay everybody on this free course will be getting an email when this releases and the paid course will be coming out and it is nothing like i've ever seen before because every single step that i'm saying i'm doing it alongside and saying why this is important and you're going to see the entire case study and that launch we're going to see how it does and how long it takes to be profitable. Everything you need to do to start is there because all of it, any work that I did on that brand, okay, has been recorded and they'll be in the course.